Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Broadway Jets YouTube channel. You'll know me from Twitter as NYJ Mike. I'm joined as always by the master of receipts, NYJ Matt. And Matt, the New York Jets have fired head coach Robert Sala. Did not see that one coming. Let's break it down. It, it feels weird, Mike. Yeah. Honestly, if you look at what happened the first five games, does he earn the right to be fired? You could argue yes, but I really thought it would happen after like a two and five start, three and seven. That felt like the time, but obviously Woody felt that the season is still alive. If you win Monday night, you're in first. And he just simply didn't think Salah was the guy that was going to make it happen. And what a shock. When that Schefter notification came through i thought it was a parody account i didn't think it was real it was one of the most shocking moments you know i think of the mccagnan firing was a shocking yep. moment in the past 15 years nothing could have braced for for what just happened yeah matt i have been very vocal that the jets could easily be four and one this season i think you tweeted out today also which was accurate where a couple plays you're four and one. This is obviously not happening. The Jets have a positive point differential. They lost a couple of close games, but and and I and you were very patient fans, more than most, for good or for bad. Um, and I don't normally like this kind of move, rash, fire the coach, blame it on one guy, whatever. But I I felt relief when it happened. It feels like the right time to do it when you're not dead and you make a move early enough where you have a chance to go on and try to make the playoffs. There are all these stats about teams that have interim coaches don't make the playoffs. Teams that have interim coaches can fuck themselves because they don't have Aaron Rodgers and they don't have a top five defense. So they, they also usually get fired in November right? when they're out of the playoff race. So that stat is very skewed. Not very yes. often does it happen when you have a two and three record. But Mike, 20 and 36 lifetime head coaching record for the Jets came here in 2021 and really was the anti Adam Gase. Came to our, our organization, not a lifeless, boring, weird coach. He came here as an energetic players coach that at the time really felt like a home run hire. Yeah. And then you obviously can point back to drafting Zach Wilson. Do I blame Sal for that? No. The Jets probably had him handpicked in January and February before they hired Sala, but that was your guy, and you didn't elevate him. You are a head coach, not the defensive coach. He earns the right to put his fingerprints on a good defense and call that as a win, but when you're a head coach, your whole system is under you, and they didn't get the job done. And I have so many different topics I want to get to, yeah. but underperformed great guy i think it was the the Derek carr quote about john gruden love the man hate the sin love the guy hate that he went 20 and 36 at the jets he's a good man matt i wish nothing but the best for him he's going to be a good defensive coordinator somewhere he seems like a good person i have no ill will towards him even less so than like the zach wilson thing where zach was a good dude whatever didn't work out this is a really good man and you feel for him and it sucks that he didn't get a real full chance with this Aaron Rodgers. But it was too many of the same mistakes over and over again. And it was the same issues that were plaguing the Jets. And you just, you have one real shot at this with Rodgers because, and you might have two, but there's only going to be the second shot if you have a good year this year. So if you, I'm not giving the, up the chance to have two years with Rodgers and this roster uh, because this is a nice man. And I'm and we're gonna talk about, it. I'm sure this is one of your topics, Matt. The the New York media is doing a really good job of dispelling a bunch of stupid nonsense rumors that the national football media is putting out. Like one that the Jets security threw Robert Sala out of the building. What are we talking about? I'm trying to get pro football talk community noted on Twitter. I'm trying to really a hard. great tweet. What are we I'm doing? Sure. I know, but it's an easy LOL Jets moment to dunk on if you're the national media. And I'd feel a lot worse if we're one and four right now. I feel yeah. a lot worse if we're two and eight. Like the season can still be turned around. Yeah. And I'm looking back to 
Yeah, he didn't get the fair shot with Rodgers. He had five games in total. And technically, if you count Monday night last year, he's three and three with Aaron Rodgers. But the sample size that he put together in his career, same mistakes like you mentioned. But Mike, how many pouty press conference do we have to sit through? It's too many. And, it, and it's tough. Like you look at other coaches around the NFL, everyone's going to lose football games. And the manner in which you conduct yourself after, it's not always woe is me. How many times have we heard, based on reporting and people that we don't have sources at all, but how many excuses are you going to make? He, it's, it's actually noted that he gave the Jets beat writers a PowerPoint deck last year of how well head coaches do when they don't have their quarterback. That's their starting quarterback. And they underperform great coaches at bad records. Like, who are you to bring that to the Jets beat writers? Who are you to take your head co- or your assistant coach's cell phones to try to find out who leaked the Zach injury, the Zach Wilson injury news? But like, there's no other head coach in three years that did all things like that. It was psychotic. The dumb commercial, the <laughs> go on and on. But it just feels it feels like he never really got it going. And if you have one three game win streak under your belt, I think it's one. Maybe there's one four game win streak in there. You I think can't serve three last. 2022 you can't survive mike and it, it just it the the things that i just listed is an insecure head coach and if you look at every work of life it could be in business it could be in a teaching school it could be anywhere if you have an insecure leader at the top your whole organization is going to crumble and that's what the jets had in their head coach and now they don't anymore i have a lot of thoughts on Ulbrich too but mike anything that i threw out there stand out to you in terms of I mean, what the hell was the last three years that we just sat through? Yeah, and it's it, again the issue was this year. Like, if the Jets were losing games like 35 31 and the offense was clicking and, and the defense was struggling a little bit, but you figured they would get back on track, sure, because that was not the problem. But we said we're not losing games 10 9 anymore to garbage teams, and we, we did, and it just didn't feel right. And I still think the Jets would have figured out a way to make the playoffs this year with Salah, uh, because that was my belief all along. And they had enough talent to kind of overcome him or, you know, at least he would coach up the defense to a certain level. But now you never know. Maybe the players will be ignited under Ulbrich and you have a chance to really win a Super Bowl. And we've talked about it. It felt like Salah got outcoached in a lot of these games. There were discipline issues. There were just too many mistakes that kept the talent down where Kurt Warner said it really well on the broadcast in the London game last week where it's like it just feels like it's everybody's time to take their turn to do something small make a mistake and slow down the offense and you just couldn't get it going for years we played historically bad on offense last year the year before you're seven and four uh and and who knows what would happen if mike white stayed healthy but um you lose six in a row it's just too many things and it's too many of the same reasons why you're losing games and it didn't feel like it was easy to sustain wins and this is a team that should win 11 to 12 games and matt jeff Ulbrich said it in the press conference today he said, we have too much talent we're, we're to be putting this performance out on the field. So I don't know how going, you know, firing Sala and hiring Ulbrich or promoting Ulbrich is going to ignite the offense because he's not an offensive coach. But maybe it feels nice to try something. Yeah. And then I do feel for the fact that Ulbrich will likely give Todd Downing play calling. And if the rumors are true, where it seems pretty well documented that Salah wasn't necessarily going to fire Hackett, I saw one report that said that, but that Salah was going to make a change in play caller. And he announced it in a staff meeting today. And Woody Johnson, for better or for worse, that part of it can't happen. You can't have your head coach have a press conference on a Monday after a London game, then have him come in to a Tuesday staff meeting, make a change, and then you go fire him and you put Olberg in a really tough spot. Now, do you take the old coach's opinion of changing the play caller? Do you keep it? And what is going to be really tough, and you see a lot of these teams that fire a coach and that next week after the, the players play tough for an interim coach, that usually happens when the players are sick of their head coach. does seem like he had a lot of respect in the locker room. Now, guys aren't being held accountable. But Mike, if they go out there with Todd Downing as a play caller on Monday, which very well could happen, and they put up 28, 31 points, Salah's going to be sitting there with his you know, six kids and his wife and out of a job saying, I was just about to make Todd down the play caller. Like that is a shitty feeling to have, but 
again, the change probably that's needed at the time. I also think Woody handled the press conference pretty well today. Yeah. Everything like, most jet beat writers said that was the best he's he's spoken. And you know, you gotta give him accountability. It's his team, he's the owner. He needed to talk today and he did. So it's not as home run dunk as some fans might make it out to be. You know, it might be the wrong move, it might be too early. Um but in this specific kind of season where you have a great roster on paper and an old quarterback, you can't do it too late. And I understand why they did it at this point. Again, I usually think teams in pro sports do things too early. Um, and you could, but you could argue this is too late. Like they could have done this in the off season and went in with a new head coach and been in a fresher, better spot. But also, I I, res- I have a lot of respect for Woody for not firing the the brass when the quarterback got hurt last year because it doesn't really make sense. You know, like you hired this team in place. Doesn't seem like Zach Wilson would thrive in any circumstance. So you give him the benefit of the doubt. You get the veteran quarterback. The veteran quarterback doesn't play. You want to see them with the veteran quarterback. Now you saw them with the veteran quarterback and you make a move early enough where your veteran quarterback is not uh rendered obsolete yeah I, and uh, it's yeah. tough because you wanted to knock off the rust more than five weeks and you need it you again we talked about it last week you're 30 percent through the season so you need to have that rust knocked off you can't wait until halfway through you're already dead and i always think of we know salah on game day we know him in press conferences but we don't know how he is around the building practices we saw on hard knocks a little bit about his demeanor a lot of coach speak a lot of just maybe empty words and metaphors that don't actually sit with the players and have anything change and there's a lot of undisciplined mistakes on this team and sometimes you need to hold people accountable quincy said it uh right after the london game you look the at one- michael clemens yeah. in the game last week matt clemens hit darnold late going out of bounds in a crucial third down 50 50 flag you know nfl soft whatever they didn't throw the flag Clemens comes off the field, solid, good job, good job. It's just stuff like that where it's, it just feels like anything goes. And there's been, and I like a player's coach, but there's been too many mistakes that are not coached. The the other thing, and it's a good point, so the sideline demeanor of Salah, I really never felt, I feel like he was always standing four feet from the field. I very rarely feel like he went over to the team, like talked to his offensive skill players, talked to his quarterback. Yeah. He really let the position coaches handle their business. And maybe that works for some coaches, but it wasn't working for them. And every time they get a turnover, we love that he's pumped up and he's getting hyped. And if one thing goes wrong, we have Pouty Sala on the sideline. Like every other NFL coach is pretty steady. They'll get pumped up. They'll get mad at the refs, but he always, it just never felt right. And the other thing that we haven't touched on is Joe Douglas saves his job. Yeah. And I, I would make the argument that he should have kept his job. I really think back, Mike, if he would have gotten a veteran quarterback in 2023 when he went down, when Rodgers got hurt, I actually think I would be a full defender of Joe Douglas. That yes. one decision literally is in my mind forever, and I can't see past that happening. It's very heinous, Matt. It's heinous. It's well, there's two things. One, Woody Johnson in the press conference said, This is the best team I've had in my 25 years. So then you don't fire the GM who made that team. Yep. That's it. And to and I agree. To your point, we've talked about it at nausea on this podcast in the past because that was we had to. There's like we were talking about Zach Wilson, it was a lot. Um, Rogers gets hurt. You know, 2022, Mike White's playing well. We just talked about it. Zach Wilson. Comes in when Mike White gets hurt. Zach Wilson gets benched in a must-win game for Chris Trevler in the offseason. This team says, hey, we need a veteran quarterback. You go out, get the best possible veteran guy available. That veteran gets hurt. You have to get another veteran. Look, like even the Dolphins this year, they got Tyler Huntley. Like, you have to try something when your quarterback is hurt. And and Joe Douglas didn't do it. And it's we were baffled. Like you threw a season in the trash with a top five defense. You have to try. This year he he mended for his mistake and got Tyrod Taylor as the backup. So, but it's baffling and it will stick in our heads. It, I, but that's the thing. When Salah got fired today, 
I would, I probably should be a huge defender and be like, definitely don't touch Joe Douglas. And I wouldn't call for his firing. And if, even if he made the Aaron Rodgers trade, he got Tyron Smith this year, got Mike Williams, made a big deal for Hassan Reddick, even though it hasn't worked out. And Woody, you know, in a clever manner said, Hey, drive up I 95. We'll, you know, bring you in here. So Good the other quote. thing that it, I don't know why it, it bothers me that the report came out that Joe Douglas wasn't there when Salah got let go. And I get it's a weird spot, right? He stays. He, maybe he shouldn't be in the room. But I honestly feel, and I could be dead wrong, and I'd love to ask Connor about it and, and get an understanding, is does Joe Douglas say, like, hey, man, like, didn't work out. Like, love you, man. Or, or do they just not? He just wasn't in the room when he got fired. Like, he he coached. Adam Gase coached his first game, which was the same game that Joe Douglas was the first time he was a GM for the team. He has been here since 2019. Like the world was so different five years ago, pre-COVID. He survived all of that. Joe Douglas on year six has not made the playoffs, has a worse winning percentage than Robert Sala. So I, I get that he built the greatest team that we've had in 25 years, but it, it really feels like he escaped yet another scenario and he's on his third head coach and hasn't made the playoffs. How often does that happen as a GM? Mike, I like that though. Don't, you don't have to make moves because historic precedents say you need to make these moves that I, it, it all I would fire. To, him. I would not fire. I him. know. I know. But, but that's, does it, it like, bother you that he wasn't in the room when Saul gets fired? Uh, it, it just makes me think, what is the plan? So yes, it kind of does bother me. If, if Woody plans to keep Joe around because he b- built the greatest roster we've seen, then keep him around, put him in the room. If he's going to fire him after the season or whatever, if you don't get the, Dev- like, don't, Dev- don't get the, Dev- I don't know what, I don't know what the plan is, which is kind of a little scary. Um, maybe it depends what the jets want to do in the off season head coaching wise, you know, like if you want to go, got, go out and get a certain coach, maybe you want to pair him with a different GM, um, it's going to be hard to fire or move on from Ulbrich when you win the Super Bowl, but I don't know. Yeah, and I agree. I, I hear you. I, I agree with you. I, I it's just a un, it's kind of an un, it's an unprecedented spot for Woody. He hasn't done this ever. Fire coach mid season, and I I think part of it I could see is Woody not liking Sala. He didn't hire him. And truly walking around that building every day, if it made him sick to his stomach and you're the owner of a $7 billion franchise and you're paying all this money in player salaries and he's getting $5 million per year to be your head coach. If you can't stand the sight of him and it seemed like Woody just finally hit his breaking point, I get yeah. why you let him go. But Mike, Monday night, it is confirmed that Woody Johnson made two phone calls. Minimum. He calls Aaron Rodgers. I actually don't think Aaron Rodgers knew. I and Woody claimed he didn't talk about Salah that he congratulated congratulated him on 60k yards. I do think at that time Woody planted the seed and said, "Look, I'm getting really frustrated. I think we need to make a shift. It doesn't feel right. We're losing the season." And Aaron probably said, "Keep, you know, I think we're good. We're going to figure it out." Just like a quarterback should defending yeah. his coach. I really believe that happened on that phone call. But Woody did confirm that he brought up this concept with joe douglas and mike it's crazy that if i'm joe douglas and that's the guy that you hired and he's been riding with you for three years now do you not say woody I, I, i'm we're keeping him we're gonna ride this out together or it was the joe douglas and Sal fracture which has been hinted at a little bit in the past not like to a great extent was joe douglas thinking his job's on the line too if he doesn't agree with woody and said, fuck him. We're gonna keep we're gonna get bricked up now with Ulbrich. Like, I don't know how that goes. <laughs> we're gonna get bricked up. There's a third phone call. He just called Christopher Johnson to say hello. But <laughs> <laughs> that meme is great when Christopher <laughs> Johnson answers the phone and said, Hey, yeah. I'm, I'm Woody's brother. <laughs> the uh it's interesting, Matt. Maybe uh there's a Joe Douglas who doesn't have any leg to stand on. It's like, all right, like we're gonna fire him. You know, like maybe that's it. And Joe's just on his last string and has to make the playoffs now because that's the other case is, is again, he put together this roster and maybe one, it was Zach Wilson holding them back, which you would have thought Zach was holding Sala back. But now that Zach's gone and there's the same results, it's Sala that was holding everybody back. So let's see what this roster has when you bring in a more competent coach. 
Uh, but it is that coach in the building. I like Ulbrich, but again, I don't know how it's going to save the offense. It makes you think maybe Salah would have had a lot of success if he had a great offensive coordinator in here. Maybe it's Nathaniel Hackett. So we got to go, go can Hackett, you know, but which kind of seems like it is. <laughs> That's what. And they try to get Arthur Smith in the off season. That was well documented. <laughs> they tried to get, well, the Steelers look decent. Yeah, but they try to win every game 17 to 14. So they work. try to get Arthur Smith in here. Doesn't happen. Mike, I, this may be such a dumb take. Sometimes it only takes one drive. Like truly, sometimes it takes one drive. And if the Jets have a three and out, they force on the first drive on Monday and they get the ball and they just click as an offense, that one drive can spark everything. Yes. It sparks it's right confidence. There, it, and, and that really could happen. Now, I think there's a clear path where we say, look, hack it. We, we're not, it's not, it's not been good enough two years, right? You're going to go do your whole gold zone bullshit and be the red zone guy. You're still going to be the main offensive assistant and be on the field. With Aaron Rodgers. We're giving the play calling to somebody else and we're going to try it out. If it doesn't work, you might come back, right? No, they we're not going to fire. It. They actually and, should do it. And if you were to fire him, and I don't think I'd fire him because you just it's just don't. unnecessary because you could just do you could just make him not call the plays. Yeah, I love my take though of having Frank Wright come in and just having Aaron Rodgers be the offensive coordinator for Monday night it would be hilarious, either great or bad, and give Frank Reich like a week and a half to build out his offense, and then he's your offensive coordinator. Sure. For this year. You could try anything now, Matt. We're playing with house money because now it's a new era and it's all hands on that it cannot it, house money is not the right term we can it cannot be less effective yeah. than it should right Aaron Rodgers like you said could literally go to the line of scrimmage call every play and you probably score 14 to 17 points so if you want to try to get Frank Reich if you want Todd Downing to call plays do something because the defense looks great you have a Hall of Fame quarterback you have this roster that we love we have one shot at it you, the Jets have to figure out a way to win 10 games. If they win on Monday night, we're going to feel ecstatic. We're going to wear our throwback jerseys. We're going to watch Aaron Rodgers play football in the jerseys that we grew up watching, the 1998 to 2018 version of the New York Jets uniform. It's going to be amazing. There's going to be the in the background of your of your video right now, there's going to be those fireworks. They're going to do a flyover. Everyone's going to have uh they're going to have wristbands on that are flashing lights. It's going to be awesome and it's going to feel really good. And like you said, hopefully they put together a couple scoring drives and and it just feels right because it's right there. They have enough talent and you got to try something. I'm happy Woody was uh, was uh, was not reactionary in this case and did things beforehand and really is giving the Jets a full shot. They control their own destiny from here on out. They do. So you have a full shot for Jeff Ulbrich and fire these guys up and give it a real chance, and you're not doing it when the Jets are 2-4 and four after they lost this Monday night game. Yeah, and I do get a little nervous, though, Mike, because there is a doomsday scenario where you finish the year in no man's land, and you're 8-10 to 10 wins, and even on 10 wins, say you're out of the playoffs, right? Say the Broncos get to 10, and they get you for the wild card, oh. and you're 8-10. You're to 10. Oh. Then, you're in a, then you're in no man's land. Do you keep old brick? Are you staying bricked up? No. Are you... Are, are you no. keeping Aaron Rodgers? Are you keeping yes. Nate? Are you keeping Nate Hackett? No. Are you letting the new head coach take it all in? And Mike, yes. the one I thing. Just that, there we go. Done. Yes. <laughs> but it's not that easy in concept because now you're an organization that clearly has an impulsive owner. And even though there's context around all of it, and you and I can easily lay out how long of a leash Salah had and how dysfunctional things were, even if we outline that, the Jets are not a prime head coaching spot to come to, even with Aaron Rodgers. But if you're a coach like Ben Johnson, who will be the top coordinator to be to get a job, offensive-minded, great. If you're Ben Johnson, do you want to take over a team with a 41-year-old quarterback with a co uh, owner that just fired someone who's one game out of division in week six? Like That is a tough hill that we need to climb back up as an organization. And you'll find a head coach. Obviously, someone's going to take the job, and you just pray that he's the right one. But that's a, a little bit in the back of my mind of it's something. the next carousel comes around. How appealing is this job? You don't have a young quarterback. Uh, so it's just an interesting it's an interesting concept. I don't right. know. Maybe one of these guys likes Jordan Travis or something. But I hear you, and that's why you don't want to give up too much capital and whatnot for Devonta. You have to still look at the future a little bit. But there's there's good candidates, Matt. 
Mike Vrabel, oh, Belichick, no, Bobby Slowick. There's guys. There's really dudes. The other Kubiak guy is the offensive coordinator, Clint's uh, son, brother, Gary. Gary. Clint is the guy. Gary Kubiak, the old uh, Texans coach and Broncos. Do you know how bad I wanted to be filming this video and Devonte Adams news broke? There are live <laughs> reaction. It would have been so fun. I was on a. Um, I have to. I should have put it out more on Twitter. I was on some podcast and and the Jet signed Tyron Smith, and I, there's a great screen grab of it. I have to start using it because it's very funny. Send but it over. Yeah, great reaction. Um, I feel I feel good, Matt. It's just I don't feel that different. I don't think it's going to change anything too much negatively. I feel like it's a shot in the arm. And worst case, we're status quo. We still have our defensive guy. They're not going to change the scheme so much. And Solid does deserve a lot of credit for what happened on Stevens, especially producing these later round guys into Quincy Williams and Jamie and Sherwood and Michael Carter, um, Tony Adams. So credit to Sala, and he's going to get a job somewhere, a prominent job as a defensive coordinator. But I feel good. It's worth a shot. I don't like these rash moves. I think a lot of times in pro sports, people move on too early and blow things up when they shouldn't, which is what would happen if the Jets this offseason move on from Rodgers and all these guys. You got to give it a couple shots, but I think it's going to be easier to do that when the Jets inevitably win 11 games this year and win the division. I'm feeling good. Yeah, and you look very curious what Olberg is going to do at at defensive coordinator. Is he going to keep calling the plays? Is he going to be more of the head coach? Uh, Is he going to pass up those responsibilities? Very interesting, but the one thing that will just call the game. Just what are you doing on the sideline? Just standing there, just call the fucking plays. What am yeah, I doing? Yeah, like, if I'm playing Madden and I'm the coach of the team, I'm just not doing anything. I don't get it. You're not playing. Yeah, I, I think part of it too. You have a guy in your ear that's telling you the timeout strategy, the two minute drill. Like, you have what are you, you have doing? a whole guy that does that. The, the last thing that we'll wrap up on, I know we're at 25 minutes here, and we've done a, uh, I, I'm I think it's been a good video so far. 20, it's 27 minutes. It says it right there. I didn't even see it. I think a five. <laughs> uh, the one thing Ulbrich said that I really respect him for in his press conference is, of course, he starts saying, I love Salah, I, great guy. And he, that was a given. He was going to say it. But he said two more things that was really cool. One was in 2021, their defense started hor- horrifically. They were yeah. horrible. They played over the whole year. And we were very, like, a lot of the fans were just fire Ulbrich. He's the worst. And Ulbrich said he could have easily let me go. And he trusted me and kept me. And it's kind of an homage to how Kyle Shanahan treated Robert Sala in San Francisco. It didn't work early on. And then when they got it going, now he became a hero and people loved him. So Ulbrich calls that out, which is pretty cool. And then he said, yep. look, we are the reason that Robert Saul got fired. We as in the coaches, the players, and we you know, they feel like shit because they obviously, as a, as a unit, didn't get the job done. And then he kind of went on to say, now we got to write our own story and stick together. So I'm happy that he acknowledged both those things. It's pretty cool for him to do that. He then um, went on for 10 minutes to talk about how they're going to do deep dives on everything. And that was like his only canned answer for every question, which was, fine by me it's very funny he said like he must have been blindsided dude i don't think anybody saw this coming so it's like imagine that it's like tomorrow i go into work and the guy above me is gone i'm like all right like i guess i gotta do all this shit i'm gonna do a deep dive and and who knows what salah said if he actually was gonna promote todd downing as play caller or not and if he said anything to Ulbrich. so then Ulbrich is like they asked him the question hey they're gonna demote hack it and put Tied down, you just have to be like, ah, we got to look at it. Like, <laughs> what are you gonna say? Yeah, yeah, and probably what the the path forward is is Woody's like, I'm seventy plus years old. I'm not going to see a championship if I wait too long. Uh, and if this all blows up anyway, everybody's gone. So fuck it. I'm gonna throw a nuke on a random Tuesday in October, and he did it. And then like, if things go wrong, which it very well could, and everybody gets fired, what Woody will probably do. And maybe Joe Douglas somehow survives it again because he built a good roster. But what they'll probably do is sign a veteran quarterback and then draft one in the top 15 and trade up and try to get a quarterback. And then you hire an offensive-minded coach and you run it back. 
and try to get a good team. Like that's probably what happens. And if you're looking yeah. around the league, Mike, how many times do you have to watch a rookie quarterback pop off? Like the commanders moving the ball. You have teams across the NFL just out of nowhere, pick it back up. Like the Steelers have a great record, which we didn't foresee. Uh, the Bears are putting up 35 points in a random game. Like I, I want that bad. And right now they didn't have it. So a spark is, is definitely needed. I, I will be very bitter if Aaron Rodgers doesn't retire and they move on from him. That's just my take, but we'll see what happens. I don't like think Aaron we're going to Rodgers could throw, go have a Jameis Winston 30 30 year and I'd still want him back. Like, I don't, yeah. I, I, it's very simple for me. If he's still throwing like he throws it, and obviously Sunday was not good enough, um, he's my quarterback. So, yes. All right. Mike, I'll get the video live. We'll promote the hell out of it. We'll get it going. If you made it this far always dm us on twitter we'll follow you back don't forget to subscribe mike the road to 2000 subscribers is very alive we're right there we're very close who we're, would have thought we're like the mets in the nlcs i love it all right very buddy close. have a good night jet up